Facebook Live Fluent Friday fans. Hang on, let me see if I can get the light up a little bit in here. Welcome to you from my um, perhaps not continuous studio, but welcome to you from Canterbury, where I've moved to, and I'm so pleased to be to be here now. And it's a beautiful, beautiful Friday, and my first Fluent Friday in August. My first Fluent Friday. In a long while, I'm so excited to have you on board. Hopefully, you're tuning in. And I know that summer is a time where we, you know, take a little break, perhaps move across the country like I just did, um, or perhaps you're just, you know, getting up to a few interesting things. And one of those interesting things, excuse me while I turn the light up a little bit in here. One of those interesting things is to leave the house. So in today's Fluent Friday Facebook Live broadcast, I would love for you to tune in and say hi. And I want to tell you a few tips and recommendations and, and my thoughts on live events. So that's polyglot events, language learning events, and all that good stuff that you find all around the world. Now, first of all, I thought we'll get into reasons to go. If you're a language learner by yourself, perhaps you don't really know anybody, you're the only one you know who's learning a language, you're not alone. There's loads of you guys out there. I regularly hear from people who say none of my friends really do what I do. None of my friends love language learning in the way that I do. And I get it because I'm also a little bit of a, an outlier in that sense. And I love having found so many people who love languages through the online community. So we're, you know, we're into it. And every now and then you want to come out from behind the screen and really go out of your way, perhaps even travel to a different country and meet those people. And our time is very limited. You know, we're thinking, well, if I'm, if I'm learning Spanish, why would I go to a polyglot event in Berlin? Like that sounds insane that nobody speaks Spanish there. But today I'm here to tell you are really excellent reasons to go. So I've got three reasons to go to polyglot events. Number one, community. Community is important for anybody, really. You want to be with people who you feel are kind of connecting to what you're doing. You want to feel like you're meeting people that can encourage you, uplift you, and especially that understand what it's like when you're going through something like trying your language on somebody and just feeling like an idiot or when you're the one who gets excited about a grammatical construction you've just learned about and you think that's so awesome and you're the only one and you've just realized you've spoken to your friend for five minutes about the subjunctive and how annoying it is and they just look at you like you're crazy. So if you want somebody to not look at you like you're crazy it really helps when you go to a place where people who are like-minded gather. Sometimes I feel that if we are learning languages and um, it's a sort of, you know, because it's a big part of your identity, you kind of partly, you're almost scared to connect with other people because there is a level of competition online, um, in, especially in the polyglot area. But what it really is about is about connecting with people who are doing this for a similar reason to you. And somebody who is learning languages like you are, many times there's something in there for you about the challenge, about the joy of language and about discovering why it's so interesting. And there are people out there when you connect with them and you really feel like you're walking into a room and you found your tribe. And this is a great, great feeling I would recommend anybody to have at any point. And it's, it's ready, it's out there in the world, ready made for you with polyglot events, with language learning events. You know, they are great. Um, you have to find the right ones. You do. And I'll come to that in a minute. Right, number, reason number two is they sort of, polyglot live events sort of soften the internet. I have previously been very outspoken about the idea of the polyglot word and this is you know years ago when there weren't so many events I felt that encouraged it encouraged a culture of collecting comparing kind of one-upmanship that really I was not interested in I learned languages because I love to learn languages I have been learning Welsh for as you know you know over two years and I do it because it's fun I do it because I love it I enjoy getting better but I don't need somebody to look at how quickly I'm getting better I don't need somebody to ask me how many languages I speak and 
you know, sort of feel judged by that. And that was what the internet felt like a few years ago. And it's really calmed down. I think the, the live events have paid such a wonderful contribu contribution to that. So if you're sometimes feeling like um, a community is, is not an encouraging space, I would really recommend you actually step out and just meet those people for real. People's reasons to learn languages are fascinating. People's methods are interesting, but when they're actually telling you about their method, it's so much easier to realize that method doesn't have to be what you do tomorrow. So softening the internet is kind of my second reason why I love to go to polyglot events, because I don't want to feel isolated and start reading things into what people write online. Uh, enough of that. Okay, finally, and this to me is the biggest reason to step out from your house and go and meet other people who are into languages no matter how and that is because they give you such energy and excitement you go to a polyglot event and there's hundreds of people recently in Bratislava several hundreds largest number ever I think they, they topped 600 it was incredible you know a very very large amount of people all ages all levels of experience and everybody's kind of into the same thing. There are talks every day of people who are, you know, who've made an effort to, to stand and, you know, like share their excitement, share their motivation with you. And you really kind of, it buoys you up, it drags, it pulls you along. And you come away with your notebook filled and feeling so motivated and so excited. So really, community, taking yourself out of the internet space and bringing in that energy and excitement these are my main reasons why I recommend you should go to a polyglot event. Now, the way to prep for these different events is um, really number one. I think something that I, I have seen um, and heard issues about is that sometimes people feel that they didn't actually do enough language learning or language practice at these events. There are certain events that are designed for this, and I'll get to the types of events later. But if you're going to something like the gathering, the polyglot gathering or the polyglot conference, I would not recommend you expect that much tuition or practice. You will find people who speak your target language, but you'll quickly find that's just not what it's about. Everybody is happy to switch languages. English is not. English is, is still, a, you know, I'm speaking English to you now. Um, English is still the language of power that is everywhere in the world. However, um, there is also this kind of sense of languages being spoken from all kind of corners of the world and real openness. So everybody's ready to, to give it a go, um, but at the same time you still want to, sometimes you just want the practical, fast understanding. So I think that's, for me, the events are more about inspiration, energy, excitement and getting a look behind the scenes of how others do it, because um, it's so interesting, but less about really practicing my target language. Number two, be open to everyone. Some of the people who are coming to polyglot events will be so different to you. If you're, say, 19, you've got your Anki set up and you're just like down with the flashcards, you've got your technical system, and then you go to a talk by somebody who is so excited about Skype, which they've recently discovered, and they've just had their first language practice session, it's it can feel like, well, you know everything that, that there is to know and they don't. But that person might also be 55, might have an amazing life story of lots of language backgrounds, might have the most amazing reason for learning a language. There might be somebody who, you know, comes across... I, have, I recently spoke to somebody who came across very dogmatic about his particular method um, and really would not accept any other way of doing it. But what's underneath there, what you could tell is just this desire to basically change the world, you know, and like to, you know, to change things for the better. So there is idealism, positivity in play. Um, the events that, that come together, if you're open to everybody and if you just chat to everybody, you get some cool life stories. So that's worth going to as well. And especially because it puts you in touch with people you wouldn't have normally talked to. And number three, do go to the talks. Do go to the talks. Even if you don't feel like you've you've gained that much, it's just it's it's an interesting environment. And even if a talk is in a language you don't understand, um, you might consider giving it a go. At the recent polyglot gathering, I attended. 
I attended the talk on Swedish, Danish and Norwegian, expecting uh, from Chris Brohan, Kalle Wongstedt and Irina, no it wasn't Irina, sorry, I think her name was Irina, I forgot, sorry, but you know I attended this talk, it was turned out in Norwegian, Swedish and Danish, none of which I understand. I spent a whole hour immersed in an environment where I could not understand a word of it and I came away feeling exhausted but at the same time absolutely fascinated and something like a polyglot gathering offers you this sort of little glimpse into what's it like to understand nothing and that was that was great so I recommend you just go to the talks make yourself you know go if you can and take a break when you when you need to of course if it's a four day event where really there's a talk after a talk after a talk you, you you're perfectly fine to take a break but do if there is a talk at the event you're planning to go to do think about going to the talk especially because it also gives you something to chat to people about so that's my extra tip there um, and number four almost goes without saying take some notes you know take more notes than you think you need because the events are often such a whirlwind that you might find you've forgotten everything within like days okay now as for my recommendations of events to go to i do have a blog article with a list on my blog over at fluentlanguage.co.uk which i'm going to put in the notes down there and i will update those events as well because it's a little bit out of date so i'm going to republish that article and you'll be seeing it next week now there are three events that i would consider polyglot events so these are for people who are interested in a language learning lifestyle in a life of being open interested curious about languages and who always just want to reach out for languages and these are the polyglot gathering most recently held in Bratislava and you can find about find out about that very easily by going on Facebook and just searching for polyglot gathering event series that will tell you where the next one is held it's already been for this year and next year's should be usually sometime in May or June and we are not yet aware of where the polyglot gathering will be held but it's always in this European major city number two the polyglot conference this is an event that moves around has been around for i think four years founded by richard simcott and alex rawlings and always held in collaboration with local guides and these events are a little i've been told i've not been a little more academic a little less community focused than the polyglot gathering but incredibly inspiring and you'll hear about a wide range of languages, language revival projects, minority languages and you know so it's more than a simple motivational talk there is there is even more research in there and it's got a, it's a substantial kind of conference you know a real conference these events move around every year last year's was held in Thessaloniki in Greece the one before it was in New York and this year it's in Reykjavik in Iceland so really you never know where the next polyglot conference will be held but you know it's usually in late October um, and that's why I don't usually go because it clashes with my husband's birthday now the final event I want to talk to you about is Langfest and Langfest is taking place this year for the second time it's in Montreal in Canada organized by Joey Perugino and Tetsu Young and Langfest is a really motivating I have heard nothing but positive events about it since last year it's a very affordable event as well and I think there are tickets still av available and if you put my name I'll put a link down there for you as well if you put my name in when you buy a ticket they give you 25% off I'll double check that for you so Langfest is taking place in two weeks. It's the 25th to the 27th of August this year. If you can get yourself to Montreal in Canada, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful city that I'm so looking forward to visiting. The program has just come out and it is awesome. There are films, there are amazing talks. I'm really looking forward to like Lindsay Williams will talk about learning a language you've never heard of and why perhaps that's a good idea. Uh, Benny Lewis is talking about the creation of a language course and I'll be there as well <laughs> and I'll talk about being a creature of habit so I'll kind of introduce people to the language learning habit 
and that is polyglot, not polyglot, Langfest, sorry. Last year it was called the North American Polyglot Symposium. It's shortened its name to a simple Langfest and you can find it at langfest.montreal.org. Fantastic, highly recommended, and I'll put more about it in the links. So these are really big conference style events. If you want your energy, if you want a group of people kind of getting together, those are it. But they're not the only ones. There are events that are actually free to attend, so that's nice. And those are all around the world and events that are a lot smaller. So you get way more, you get more of that kind of language practice. If you're looking for a more familial atmosphere, you just don't want to travel halfway across the world, perhaps these are it. So we have two trade shows that I can recommend to you. Number one, Expo Lingua, that's in Berlin. And number two, the Language Show Live. Now these events are often aimed at schools and teachers because they are more about the language learning industry and as we know the adult language learner industry, the polyglot industry is like this and the school industry is like that. Um, but they are still extremely worthwhile, interesting, motivating events and I'm, I've just moved a lot nearer to London so I'm going to attend the language show live this year with joy. There are lots of introductory language classes there's always classes in things like Welsh and British Sign Language, but also a few more exotic ones. You really, and the great thing is it's a trade fair and trade fairs are so much fun because you get to go around and you get to look at everybody's stuff and products and ideas and innovations. You don't have to buy, you just get to look around. So it's kind of like a really lively, busy language bookshop. Um, that leaves, leaves you coming away feeling very energized and motivated. And also, both of these events, Expo Lingua and the Language Show Live, bring in a careers fair as well. So if you're curious about careers with languages, you will find the right stands there. You can go straight to big multinational corporations. You can go to MI6, which are a British spy company. <laughs> company. The British government spy is not a company. Um, you know, and you can you can talk to them about what a career looks like for them for a specialist linguist or a language specialist and this is fascinating stuff. So I would highly, highly recommend trade fairs at least once. Um, and like I said, they're free to attend. So and you get away with so much swag. You know, if you like collecting stuff at trade fairs, these are the places for you. Oh hey Rasmus! There's, I've just had a comment. Hi, thank you for tuning in. Um, as you can see. New um new space. <laughs> I've just moved in, like just out of shot, you can see, you cannot see a thousand boxes. Now, really small events are also available and these are not to be overlooked. And when I was writing my article, I learned about the multilingual cafe in Taipei. Who knew? Yeah, I learned about language cafe and I learned about Fiesta de los Idiomas, which is an event in Chile that Cristobal told me about. So there really are language events all around the world, not just in you know, Germany and Britain, but there is just so, so much more. And these are interesting and fascinating language events that are, like I said, a lot smaller, but they bring in, usually bring in way more cultural aspects. And I really love that, you know, international dance nights, international food, international, talks and you learn about different countries and that's what get, gets us excited um, about those different countries. I absolutely think that language learning is about more than just you know grammar and words and vocab and listening, reading, speaking and writing. Those are the technical bits, you have to get them right and I often tell you about these in Fluent Friday but the culture, excitement, love and traditions of other countries need to be recognized, seen known and celebrated and that's what the smaller language events are really really good for so have a look around search for words in facebook and go on your facebook events page and type in things like language cafe multilingual cafe um, and fiesta de los idiomas and another event in that vein sort of a meetup event i really want to recommend to you is languages of london run by my now local friends uh, Marta and Ollie, Ollie Richards from I will teach you a language.com, Marta from Lingualift, these people and a lot more people actually, my Welsh, you know, Frim uh, Gareth as well. And these are 
Languages of London is a huge meetup event and they're even running their first festival in late September and again I'll put a link to that in the notes down there. So if you're in London, see you there hopefully. And finally, I just wanted to give a shout out to the website meetup.com. Uh, meetup.com is a meetup event for all kinds of events or a meetup website and directory for all kinds of events and I have found it a lot better than Eventbrite for finding local events. So if you're looking for local language meetups, look in the university, look in your local library, look on Facebook and look on meetup.com and I guarantee you, you will find something. If it looks like there is nothing, go to see if there is perhaps an English speakers meetup or an English practice cafe etc because people who want to practice their English are people who have a different native language um, they're not necessarily polyglots who are learning because they love learning because often there's a more of a necessity to learn English they just you know they're not really as fascinated by it but in terms of connecting over the cause of language learning and finding other people like yourself who love languages those are also great places to go. So we've got the polyglot events, we've got the trade fairs, the international language cafes and festival of languages, etc. And then there's local, smaller local events or even just an English practice cafe. I would love to hear from you. You know, if you have, you know, Rasmus, you, you're watching, I know, and there's a few more of you watching. Um, where, what events have you been to? You know, what have you really, really enjoyed? And uh, one more question for you. Um, because I am going to Langfest and I'm going to give a talk there, like I said. And what I often do is I record little live snippets and pull them into a special podcast episode for you. We did this twice for the Polyglot Gathering and I'm going to be seeing Lindsay there in Langfest. And I would really love to know, is there anything that you're curious about? Something you want to hear about these events, tips, language snippets, stories, etc. What would you like me to interview people about what would you like to hear that's a really interesting question because i don't want to do the same interviews all the time and that really is it i hope this was useful i hope this gave you a little motivation if you've never been to a language event in order to go to a polyglot event i guarantee you you do not have to speak even one foreign language that is beside the point you just have to be into it and if you're into it that's all you need and if you're coming to langfest leave me a comment High five, can't wait to see you there. Bye guys, <laughs> out into the sunshine. <laughs>